Hello, I'm Kate from Zen Stitching and today I'm going to show you two different ways you can whip stitch. The whip stitch is actually the same process in both different ways, but one is when you're making a feature of a hole in a pair of jeans, for example like this here, and the other is when you're applying a patch onto your jeans, for example in this spot here. So we're going to change camera angles and I'll show you the details. Here is an example here of how I have done some whip stitch on a patch that is sitting on top of my jeans. And I'm going to demonstrate how to do that same process over this hole here, which is already starting to fray. So you can see that originally I'd patched it with uh, some sashiko stitching and there's a piece of denim behind that supports and reinforces the fabric and now what I want to do is I'd like to put another patch over the top just to um, reinforce this wear area here and also tidy it up. So the first step we need to do is to find some fabric that's going to be wide enough to cover the hole. I would suggest something that's going to be about almost an inch wide on either side that gives us ample room to cover the the patch because i've already got some denim on the back of the my jeans here i am using a lightweight fabric and here i have a lightweight denim if you're doing this and you don't have uh, denim at the back to reinforce your fabric I would recommend using a fabric that is the same weight as the fabric that you are mending. This just means that it's going to assist with the strength and the wear of the fabric. If you use something too light, it's likely that it will fray and wear um, more easily than a, a thicker, heavyweight fabric. So I've got my piece of fabric here. I've measured it out. I've also ironed under all of the raw edges so that I will have a nice neat edge when I go to apply the patch to my jeans. So just looking at how I want to position it, I'm going to make a point of lining up the lines from my sashiko stitches and just line it up just there like that so it's not actually going to go over this seam here. Then the next thing to do is to pin this patch in place. Taking care not to pin the two layers of or three layers of fabric together, just working on pinning the fabric to this layer here. So to do this, what I do is I put the, the pin in and then I pull it up and lift it up at the same time. And this helps me get a feel for uh, how many layers of fabric that I'm pinning it together. Now you can as well put your hand in on the inside and support it that way too. So the next thing I will do is thread a needle. So I've got here a sashiko needle. These are specially designed for mending. I really like them because they're quite a wide needle and they have a super sharp point. So they're designed for stitching through layers of fabric and a reasonably large eye as well because the, the thread that I'm using to mend is a sashiko thread and it's generally thicker than most cottons. So here we go, threading the needle, tying a knot in the end where there actually is a knot, so I'll do that again. And then we're going to start on the reverse side of my jeans. So one of the things I like to think about when um, doing mending on jeans is the repairs we do have to be pretty robust. Um, and I found from past experience that just a knot like this isn't generally enough to keep my thread in place. So I wanna do a few small anchor stitches to really make sure 
I'm securing my fabric, um, my thread to my fabric. So I'm actually going into the seam here and I, what I've done is I've lined up my finger here with the seam, kept it over there and then here are a couple of anchor stitches and what an anchor stitch is is just a few small stitches in the same area and this just works as reinforcing the knot. So I like to do three now looking back at this on this side again I'm still going to use my fingers to help me uh, guide my fabric from or my needle from the reverse side to the front side so I'm putting my thumb here I'm also visualizing it and we can see here that that's where I want my first mark to come And you can go in and out in this manner. That's how you get your whip stitch patch in place. And that's how you attach your patch in place using whip stitch. Another way, if you're feeling comfortable with this process, is you can work from the top. So I'm going to put my needle in here, move it along to about even space of where I want it to go in. And pull it out. And this just means there's less juggling back and forward between putting your hand in the reverse side of the fabric but this does take a little bit more time so if you're new to this i would suggest the first option and if you're feeling brave try this second option too now that we're at the end again I'm going to do a few reinforced stitches at the back just to anchor the end as well. And then that's my whip stitch patch. And I'm going to do a patch uh, with the fabric on the reverse side of the, the jeans. So you can see here, I've already uh, gone ahead and pinned the patch in place. It's about this big here. so. Again, it's probably about five inches. And these pins here are safety pins. Now, the reason why I'm using safety pins is because um, they keep the fabric in place and they also mean that I'm not actually accidentally going to prick myself with a pin um, or they're not going to fall out with the, the stitching process. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to make a, a feature out of this hole here. So to do that, I'm going to get my scissors and very carefully cut the, that fabric away there. So you can see when I do that, that already the fabric underneath is starting to show through. So what I'm going to do is just playing actually. I'm having a look to see how it looks. And I quite like how that dark bit of denim is peeking out from underneath. Now, what you could do if you wanted to make it a little bit bigger, which I think I will, and it's also going to make it a little bit easier to fold it under, is to go around and clip these side bits here. means that each bit 
he's going to fold under just that little bit better. There we go. We can see that it's starting to give the illusion of that whole or negative space. My next step is to using a whip stitch, which is where we just wrap that stitch around. I'm going to sew this little bit in place, just like this. So I'm grabbing my needle and some thread. So again, it's the sashiko style needle and some sashiko style thread. going to thread my needle, put a knot at the end and then I'm going to set this up so that it's easy to stitch. So it's held in place and as I'm stitching I'm going to fold this under and do some stitching and this whip stitch goes in and around so it's like if, uh, a circular motion and I'm going to keep these stitches close together So you can see that as I'm working my way around the circle, I'm folding it down, placing those frayed edges under, and then coming back in. With the whip stitch, and that is going to hold So there we have our hole that has been repaired with the whip stitch. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked this video, please click the subscribe button to get regular updates when I upload new videos. Happy stitching!